This is Tarek, and we are going to be looking at the Hasselblad 907X control grip. This is the top of the control grip, so we're going to quickly review what the controls are on the top of the grip, and then we're going to talk about each of them individually. So, very quickly to identify them, there's a front scroll wheel, there's a rear scroll wheel, the shutter button, the AF. MF button, menu button, browse button, AF drive, and the joystick. So in most regular shooting, what I do is I'm using basically three, three controls. The front control to just cycle through to change aperture, I prefer shooting an aperture priority. The shutter button, half press to get exposure, and compose, and of course take the picture. And then the joystick, a quick press of the joystick straight in will magnify. So those are the three controls in my preferred shooting mode, aperture priority. So I just want to introduce that quickly. But how the front control scroll works depends on what mode you're in. You can be an aperture priority, shutter priority, manual program. So it will work differently for each of them. So that's the front control. The rear control and in the manual will control both the aperture on the front scroll wheel and the, sh the shutter on the back. So those are the ones you probably use the most in, in shooting. Those would be the most uh, common controls. The AF-MF, if you're using an XCD lens uh, like this one, the 45P, it will allow you to go from AF directly to MF. So that's completely manual focus from autofocus. When you're in manual focus, a uh, nice thing is that uh, uh, as you are turning the focus ring, you will see focus peaking on the object as with highlights of magenta, orange, cyan. I think there's one other color. So uh, on difficult focusing, uh, subjects, that's a, a good thing to use. And it's it's easier than trying to, you know, get through the menu on the back to find the same thing. So it is the closest to your finger, where your finger would be, to toggle between that and then you can control the lens. So I like that convenience. Uh, the menu is going to be fairly straightforward. You press the menu button, that's the next closest in the way I interpret uh, how this works. And then you can see the, the whole menu. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But I want to show the, the browse button, which is this one here. It looks like the, the play button right there. So turn the camera on first to remove the lens cap. I already removed the lens cap. Okay. So I'm going to press the browse button right here. And Now we can see some of the pictures I have. So to scroll through, this would be similar to other DSLRs. Moving left and right, we'll go through the menu. So moving to the left or right here. Okay, just cycling through the pictures. Move it over one, it goes through the pictures. If I want to see details on a particular picture, like the histogram or the overlays, just move this, the joystick up or down. So there we go. Up, there's a little bit of information right there. Want to see more? There's the histogram, the color histogram. Move it down again. There's the general histogram. And then up, back, through. Another neat thing is now if I want to check focusing, on that picture. Press the joystick button straight in. So I'm going to watch this press. And it will just incrementally go straight to the focus point up to 100%. Now I, I bumped the joystick up and down. So as I go right and left, going up, see the tree. And then to back out, just 
press send all the way. Once that 100%, it'll go right back. So that's very useful. Menu button. You press the menu button one, and you get the uh, icons. And each of these are very easy to drill down in. Press it again, and um, you get the most common controls you'll be using. So here, you can press the joystick button in, and you can see it highlights. So I can move it to cycle through each one of these main menu things. White balance, autofocus, manual focus, ISO. Say I want to change the ISO. Press the joystick button in once, and then I can toggle this way, down or up, make my selection, or I can use the scroll wheel. See, I'm scrolling here. Scrolling. See it changing, okay? So, and making my selection, press the shutter button in. So you can also do that normally just by pressing on the screen and doing the same thing. So it's a preference, but having the control grip makes it very natural and intuitive to just go that route. So that's the uh, menu button quickly. You want to get back to shooting? Simple half press of the shutter button, and I'm far too close to everything here for that to work. So uh, that's the quick thing. Uh, I wanted to talk about the shutter button because to me, I'm going to turn the camera off for this. This is something I found very intriguing. I used to have, and I still have, a control grip from the Hasselblad 503 CW. So this is the CW control grip. Now this shutter button right here for that other system has some similarities to this shutter button. First in diameter, they're the same diameter, 11 millimeters or 7 sixteenths of an inch. And then the press of this one half in has a similar a feel to the Hasselblad 907X. This half press in is uh, for you know, focusing and exposure lock, which you'd expect. Uh, but it also has a little bit of a, a, a sp spring or sponge feel. It's resisting as you're pressing down. And it pushes straight up. And that's an improvement over the Winder CF. Uh, they have that same sort of feel coming back up. And then the uh, full press, after the half press, is a lighter touch than the regular shutter button on the 907X body. So those are the main things on the control grip. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, I would say that's about it. Attaching it is uh, very easy. It's already attached here, so I'm gonna turn it upside down. I have a, um, a really right stuff uh, multi-camera plate uh, screwed on here, and that's screwed onto the bottom of the control grip. I did talk about this in a previous video. And here, here's the control grip and this arm. Uh, this screw here and a little um, uh, connector here are the two things that make contact with the camera body. And it screws in lightly, but centered is where uh, the, uh, the tripod mount is, and that goes centered into the control grip, which is centered to the camera. So I'd say that's about it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if it was, please uh, uh, do the things that you do. Subscribe, like, comment, uh, share, and uh, keep, uh, keep photography fun. I don't have any uh, links right now. If I get any that I find interesting, I will add them to the description. Uh, no affiliate links at this time, but if there are any, I'll put a disclaimer down there that says uh, something about that. But uh, the control grip is basically a very useful accessory. It's, uh, 
it's very nice to have all of this just at the fingertips and it makes it uh, more enjoyable to use. I basically want to use this camera with the control grip uh, pretty much all the time and I would only remove it if for some reason I need to go even lighter <laughs> than this small package. Uh, the uh, other thing that's nice is when you're shooting vertically uh, you can easily press this in uh, and well one thing in the manual it says is if you um, are shooting low, you may want to use the thumb to, to press the controls. I have not tried that, but I would say that's about it. So if you're interested in the control grip, there's a little bit more information about it today. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.